everyone welcome back to the channel of ecoholics so here i am again with the discussion of one another question of economics optional paper from the year 2022 let's just get into the question so this question is question number 3 part a it's again from the macro module it asks you that is curve is the locus of equilibrium points in the commodity market what do the points above and below the is curve signify so it's a really 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 simple question like points above and below is curve is something which we which we all of us would know if we have done the islm model but one thing you have to take care is now when they have written this first statement that is curve is the locus of equilibrium points in the commodity market yes they have told us but even when you are going to write your answer dekho if you will just jump to this part that okay uh, what does the points above and below is curve are going to signify your answer will not be appropriate for the given word limit so you might fall short or if you try to cover your word limit you are going to write vague things into your answer which is a really big no from our side or from your side as well so what you will have to do what strategy you will have to uh, follow while writing this answer so it's going to be a 15 marks question what will you do now even though they have told you that yes is curve is the locus it is the schedule we get from the equilibrium points of commodity market but you still come to it in the introduction so 3 to 4 or 4 to 5 lines should be allotted to the is curve now one more thing i would like to tell you here is you will feel that i do not need to show the derivation of is curve here because they are just talking about above and below is curve but no the diagrams which we use for deriving the is curve are really good strategy to move ahead with so what happens is if you will show those diagrams the answer will be redirected to the point that yes you are coming to the points above and below is in a very uh, strategic manner in a very comprehensive manner so how do you write your answer how do you start your answer by writing a good introduction so you will first talk about the is curve you will write its definition please mention the definition by using different words from the ones already given into it now you will talk about so how can you give how can you take the definition you can say that is curve is the schedule of the combination of income and rate of interest which bring equilibrium in the goods market or in the commodity market that's how you come at it coming to the next thing how will you say okay you you can just start making the diagram so i will let me make proper diagrams so this one would be for savings uh, investment curve this one would be for savings curve and this one i can use for the is curve over here what can i say investment curve would be downward sloping savings curve would be upward sloping now how do we get is so if this is the rate of interest r not and this is my equilibrium income now if rate of interest will fall the equilibrium income would increase because okay so here instead of equilibrium income we would be having investment so little correction your investment now due to increase in investment the income would also increase so first we were at y not income and where i was getting the s not savings to keep the goods market in equilibrium s not savings have to be equal to investment i know now because there is an increase in investment there would be an increase in income and that increase in income will increase the savings also because savings are a positive function of income now what has happened is savings and investment are again equal so as a consequence of fall in rate of interest there has been an increase in income how will i represent this this is y not this is y1 this is r not this is r1 so r not y not one point r1 y1 another point and if i join them i would be getting my downward sloping is curve so you talk about this but in brief you know that the question is about points above and below the is curve so please keep yourself concise while writing this answer but it's a good strategy to follow this because 
you have shown that okay that's how we have got is curve so now because i know the savings and the investment side are coming into the picture to bring the is curve so when i will be talking about the points above and below is i know that okay they will be related to either investment or related to savings and yeah after that i would be taking the help of diagram to talk about the points above or below is curve so in this answer diagram is non negotiable you cannot move ahead without taking the help of diagram so this whole answer is only about diagram you have to explain these diagrams only so this is your is curve now we have to talk about the points above and below the is curve how will you talk e1 these are the points on is curve now on is curve i know the goods market will be in equilibrium these are the combination of rate of interest and income which are keeping the goods market or commodity market in equilibrium this is e4 how will i be starting now you will first the first point will be about that e1 and e2 are going to keep the commodity market in equilibrium so point e1 and e2 keep goods market in equilibrium but at point e3 and e4 we have a disequilibrium of goods it how so to explain the points let's say let's start with e4 i will be comparing the point e1 and e4 so what's happening at e1 and e4 over here we have income and here we have rate of interest so at point e1 and e4 the income level is same the income level is same but the rate of interest is higher at e1 and rate of interest is less at e4 so what happens in a good market if rate of interest is less i know if the interest rate is less my investment would be higher yes because investment is inversely proportional to rate of interest so if the rate of interest is small investment is going to be higher so it means at e4 investment is going to be higher so if investment is higher aggregate demand is higher okay so if i compare my point e1 and e4 aggregate demand would be higher as compared to e1 like at e1 aggregate demand and income would be same but here because the rate of interest is very less investment will uh, just increase too much and it will lead to higher increase in aggregate demand and therefore what we can write at the point e4 we are going to have excess demand of goods the ad is in excess of as so at point e4 we have excess demand for goods so that's how you have to write your answer i have seen many uh, students doing this that they just directly write ki okay e4 pe excess demand for goods hoga e3 pe excess supply for goods hoga not like that you have to compare you have to come to it in a manner now comparing e3 and e2 again the income is same at e3 and e2 but rate of interest is higher at e3 e2 is a point in equilibrium this keeps the disequilibrium so at e3 since the rate of interest is higher investment would be lower so ad will fall short of the y so aggregate demand is going to be less than the aggregate supply so at e3 we would be having excess supply for goods demand would be less and supply would be more because income level is same so it means on the points above the is curve which is e3 we have excess supply for goods and on all the points below the is curve we have excess demand for goods so this is the correct method for answering these type of questions i hope you will find this video useful so just let us know in the comments that what are your views has this video been helpful for you and for watching more videos on the economics optional paper 2022 subscribe to the channel like this video and just let us know 